Hello. Hi. Hello, Jorge. How are you? Okay, you're muted. Yeah. I was checking. Hey. Hello, Taylor. Good, good. Hi, David. Victor, hello. Uh, so, um, we have a rather sparse agenda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anything, uh, anything on people's minds that they'd like to uh, discuss? <clears throat> Oh, actually, uh, preamble. Um, hi, this is the WebAssembly Working Group, uh, or uh, Tag Runtime, a CNCF uh, uh, org uh, member, and we uh, abide by the code of conduct of the CNCF. Uh, generally, be kind to each other. Please uh, raise your hand to be recognized uh, in more formal discussion. And uh, yeah, let's. Uh, Hear everybody's voice. So, welcome. And I call to order. <laughs> so, um, I think for future editions of the meeting, uh, going to try to pull in, as, as Ricardo had mentioned in Slack, uh, some CNCF landscape groups uh, to come in and either discuss uh, technology op options uh, that may include WebAssembly or just uh, to present in general to the working group. Um, particularly if they have interest in WebAssembly and how we can, you know, help to uh, help folks to adopt or understand what options that are available to them uh, to take advantage of uh, this fascinating technology. Um, I can volunteer for the next, whenever we're going to do our next meeting. I'm not sure if we do it weekly or bi-weekly. It's on the calendar as weekly, but I feel like it's been bi-weekly looking at the stuff in Not the past. Me. So, no. okay. It is. Um, so anyway, I, I mean, I'd love to actually talk over Wasm Cloud, even though Kevin's been involved here. I don't think he's really talked about it. So mm -hmm. um, I do think it'd be really, uh, there's a couple things I've noticed just having been in, you know, cloud native space for a long time. I think we need to have good overviews from, from CNCF projects um, who are in the WebAssembly space. And that is all of us here, I know. Um, have projects that, that are in the CNCF space that are related to WASM. Um, but I would also really love to see like that. When, once we have that, we start using it as a way to to promote the growth of it and the involvement of the, the CNCF community. So I'd, I'd really, if I don't know, like because we only do this bi-weekly, but I would love if we could maybe even get a few of these together um, before KubeCon NA. And then when we're there, like we could, I, I, I'd want to strategize more. I've just been like, thinking through this as I've been looking at the previous agendas and whatnot of maybe coming up with some sort of the, the idea of any working group, um, which I didn't know if I, I couldn't find a charter for the group, but um, any like uh, any working group is generally the, the goals to like make sure you're improving the adoption or, or setting some sort of agenda of how you're going to, to help like drive the, the future of the technology. And the thing that, um, like my personal biggest goal, like I'm come, I'm I'm totally transparent here. There's no, there's no um, hidden agenda from me. The um the thing I would love to see is us being able to influence back to communities such as the Bytecode Alliance and um the and then like other people in the Wasm community so that they know like what the the cloud native developer needs um because it's been an interesting thing to see that in the conversation where it generally there um trends towards one technology or or one specific thing rather than the the whole multitude of stuff that's out there right now so i would love to love to see that if we can get at least some of it i know we're not we only have five and a half weeks or something till <laughs> kubecon and a but it would be really nice even if we can get just a few of the presentations and be able to point people at it and then maybe talk a little bit about how we can how we can like discuss that moving forward. Anyway, that's that's my thoughts after kind of reading through things. 
Any any particular ones that uh, you're most interested in? Uh, any particular projects? Yeah. Um, I, I know mean, I, I, I can guess one of them. <laughs> well, yeah, but I think you presented you presented Runwazi in here, right? Um, Indeed. so, um, and then I don't know if I, I didn't go, I haven't watched every, I don't have time to watch, go back and watch every single previous <laughs> meeting, but, um, I don't know if like on has done some of the stuff that VMware has been working on over there. Um, yeah, I think, I think I didn't, I didn't present it the entire, the entire play. So yeah, that could be something for, for, to prepare. I mean, we have already material for that. Um, we have also a presentation for KubeCom. So I think it's a good thing to start like <laughs> rolling out the ideas. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I think it's, it's just good for everyone to have, we all kind of have a desire here to just have people know about the project. So coming mm -hmm. in and kind of giving like the project overview discussion, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 10, 15 minutes, maybe to just say like, Hey, here's what the project is. These are the types of use cases we're focusing on and and have those those kind of things we can reach out to some of the other people out there um there's uh i know like there's been some of the conversation it's, and it's going to be interesting because we, we probably should help disambiguate between things because some things are run times some things mm -hmm. are like yeah. application run times right like the stuff that like a lot of stuff that vmware has and wasm cloud they're application run times not mm -hmm. wasm run times and then there's mm -hmm. others that are like wasm like we talked about things like with zero right? Which is mm -hmm. an, another one people want to know about that's closer to the runtime level. And so there's, um, I think there's some good like conversations to be had there. I would love to hear with zero, um, dialive.so. Um, mm -hmm. those, those kind of, I just, it just be good to have it out there because the thing I fear most is that people come in and they see, they see one single use case for for mm -hmm. WebAssembly rather than the plethora of use cases that I think most of us here are are in on um that we really want to see ha um happen and then um yeah those are those are kind of the the top ones top level ones I think of I know I've missed some but like just kind of getting as many of those projects as long as they're I think we should try to stick with CNCF to start because this is a CNCF working group um and then use like any of our opportunities of other technologies we use that might not be CNCF to to kind of talk about those as well. Um, just because we've all the all of us in the who are in the CNCF try to use our our time to like push forward some of those those projects and and try to lift each other up. That's part of the organization. So I want to make sure we start with those and then venture out from there so that like people know like oh, okay here's the WASM working group inside the CNCF. Here's all the projects they told me about that are inside of CNCF. And then kind of use that as the basis because I, I do want to see all these things and like we've all looked at these different projects, but I don't think all of us have necessarily heard from the people behind them, um, which really helps clarify like why the project exists, what they're doing with it, where it's going, those kind of things that everybody wants to know. So um, I guess tactically, would you uh, so two weeks from now, would you be interested in talking about uh, Wasm Club? Yes, I would love to do that in two weeks. And like, like I said, I think we keep it to 10 or 15 minutes. So nobody's soapboxing. And yeah, um, yeah looking at yeah, I should be totally good on two weeks from now. And so yeah, and I don't know, like if if on hill, if you'd be available to um, yeah, we can at least do we, could, yeah. we can do the VMware projects, we can do the Wasm mm -hmm. Cloud stuff, and then start from there. It might be good to come back to. I don't know how long it's been since Run Wazi, um was presented, like what, like everything that was going on. But it'd probably be good to bring that up again. Just mm -hmm. like I want to have things somewhat recent and up to date for people if we were to do this. Yeah, and honestly, I I think when we talked about Run Wazi, it was more in the context of KWASM. So yeah. I don't think we've really dug into, uh, you know, Run Wazi all that much. Um, yeah. It'd be kind of interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Crusslet? Uh, well, given the fact that I helped create that, um, <laughs> it is, as far as I've been saying, I know that Ralph's been saying that as well, like it's pretty much dead in the water right now because most of us have moved on to other things, right? Like there's, um, there, there's been the run Wazi stuff that has been the preferred way to do it down at the container, container D shim. Um, level uh there is 
um, most of the rest of us are, are working on other things like Wasm Cloud or Spin or those kind of, of projects that are out there. And so it hasn't really been updated. We've just had too much of other stuff going on. The OCI distribution crate that's part of Crestlet is still being used for sure because everyone inside of Rust is using it for fetching images out. So anyway, um, we have we have some things there, but it definitely has value as like, um, I loved the uh, virtual kublet concept because I was there when it, at Microsoft when it was released, but like, honestly, like Crestlet's probably actually an easier way to write a kublet if you're going to write something custom. And um, then the crater project is the way to write operators. The only way I know that that's a framework to write operators and controllers and Kubernetes. So the web assembly part of it is kind of just dead in the water because people have moved on to other things. Um, like we have run Wasi, Wasm Cloud has its different, um, has the Wasm Cloud chart and ways to like run it and connect it into Kubernetes. So I think that would be a really good follow-up after we do like the talking over as many of the projects. And it looks like I was just double checking. Dilubeso does not have their open source. I, I have a hard time keeping track of the CNCF versus Bytecode Alliance versus who's and what and what thing. But yeah, like as long as we hear from each of the CNCF projects and then go back and say like, okay, like, the elephant in the room is like, how does this play with Kubernetes? Um, and then we can talk about that too, just to show like what options are available. Like, and and I'd love to start having us distinguish between, and based on what I know of having talked to people within the CNCF, that they, they want the, for this sounds so businessy, I don't mean it to sound businessy, but they want the diversification here. Like it can't just be like, we can't always have all the eggs in the Kubernetes basket. And so I think it'd be really good to have that discussion of here's how it plays well with Kate's. Here's the stuff that you can do that maybe you don't need Kubernetes for, that you're better off doing something in pure web assembly without connecting it without, like you can still connect it, but you don't want to have like, you don't want to have a dependency on Kubernetes to run that. Um, just so that like we can start showing like, cause that, that's what everybody wants to know. They want to know the difference uh, between the two the the two things that they could do with it inside of the cloud native space. So anyway, ju just some thoughts there. But I, yeah, Crustlet is kind of dead in the water from the Wasm space. It's looking for anybody who wants to maintain it for the Kubernetes stuff. But um, yeah, from the Wasm space, run Wasi has kind of been the, the thing that's most people have been pointed towards and makes more sense for people to do at this point because there's effort behind it. I would really love to... I'd love to get a talk where we dig into uh, container D shims and we talk like, I think that's, that's actually run Wazi is, is neat. in in the fact that, you know, you can run web assembly and, and container workloads, native, uh, you know, native container workloads, but I, I would love to actually dig into some of the technical bits of how, uh, you know, the Shim API and uh, TTRPC enables us to write stuff in Rust and and then, you know, the work that's gone into that. Uh, Jorge, uh, uh, that would be, uh, I'm not sure if you're interested in chatting about that. You've been contributing a, a lot to the project uh, as of late. Um, yeah, sure. Really good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm... I'm not so familiar from the container D API side. Uh, I'm 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 learning still uh, how all of that works together. Um, for instance, I, I don't know many of the details how how TTRPC is different from any other solution that we could have chosen. Um, yeah, I think no at, worries. Uh, I think at some point I... there, I think at some point there were options you could choose either. TTRPC or GRPC, right? And but I think that's gone now. I and think that could be a really just... great, great opportunity to bring in Brian Goff as well, uh, who you know, basically spiked the project initially, and uh, you know spent quite a bit of time in virtual Kubelet as well, and uh, um, uh, container D side as well. Um, and then you brought up uh, Wazero. Um, I, I think you. I don't remember if that's CNCF or not, but I would love to hear a little bit more about the um, the things they're doing. Um, the reason why I think it'd be maybe even if they aren't CNCF is that like Go is such a common language inside of the CNCF that it just might be good to have so people see it. Um, 
in general, I'd like to have conversations with the maintainers of most like Wasm Time, Wasm 3, um, Whammer, those kind of like people all coming in and just talking about like, what what are the trade-offs and benefits? Because there's, mm. um, I'm really hoping, I don't know if it will, I'm really hoping that um, we won't have what happened in the container wars. Sorry, 4K since I know you're you're really you're involved in docker but docker docker just basically became the thing and there was no other runtime right like i think a lot of us have a soft spot who've been in it for a while have a soft spot for rocket you know like those kind of things where it's like we and i'm hoping that like the idea of uh inside a web assembly because it makes more sense honestly than it did for containers to have differently tuned runtimes that can run different things that are the same thing with like in different places is a really interesting story that I don't think a lot of people will think about, but definitely falls within the purview of like tag runtime, right? The idea of this, like, hey, there's there's multiple runtimes here, right? You have a general purpose one like Wasm time, but I mean, if you're going to be running on like um, real time, like RTOS stuff, or if you're running like super tiny devices, then something like Whammer might be better. Or maybe you're you're coming from a space where you just have a lot of ghost stuff and it's like popping in Wazero could be a good thing. Like, I, like there's, I want to see those kind of conversations. Yeah, sorry. So I think that, that it's important to make the difference. Like, what zero is implemented in Go, mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean that like today you can compile a, a Go program yep. to WebAssembly and run it. Yep. Right. Um. So I, I, I'm all for bringing new runtimes and having a, a, the variety of runtime and giving the end user the choice of what they want to use. Um. I don't know. We we even support. Wasmer with Wasix and all of that stuff. Um, so I, I'm all for Was Zero. I think that currently with Run Wasi, which is written in Rust, we would need a, an FFI interface with Was Zero. Um, but um, other than that, I don't see much of a like. I, I don't see a selling point on Was Zero being written in Go. For me, it's like, eh, eh, <laughs> it's just any other language like. Uh, Wasmer, uh, uh, Wasmer is written in C plus plus, and uh, uh, Wasmer time is written in Rust. Like, yeah, we do have other languages. Um, yeah, I don't see. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. But yeah, I I don't see like anything special about Wasmer being written in Go and the community. It's more of a, just a, a being a, of special interest to people. That's the thing is there, you have a lot of Go developers. And so people might be willing to understand it from the perspective of Go. And also just because it's another runtime. I, my argument is that like knowing about the runtimes is the first step of like understanding what value they provide, where they slot in, what their specialties are. Um, that that kind of feels very useful to people in the, in the cloud native community, especially the people who work at the lower level with things like Renwazi or whatever, because Renwazi consumes those those different runtimes. Um, same with Container Dshim, if I remember right. And so, like that's the that's the kind of thing I want to just have people to know. Like, okay, well, like, and, and knowing the difference because there's still a lot, at least in my observations coming off of WasmCon and other stuff. And like, if you're having the confusion at WasmCon where people are definitely interested in Wasm, you're going to have the confusion in the wider community about like what what is the difference between something like like the the one that like I I, de I deal with uh, obviously because we're like Wasm Cloud's an app runtime right is what's it like we're not like we're not doing something specific to run your WebAssembly module we're just consuming a runtime underneath like Wasm time and people don't know the difference between those and seeing and so seeing where these slot in like oh this is like the low level the thing that's actually executing the WebAssembly itself versus this is something that's a little higher level or a little higher level than that like that kind of I'd love to have that. It's all about the sharing of that knowledge is is why I've been thinking through this, if that makes any more sense. But I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and from the Wazero side, uh, from a Go developer standpoint, um, you know, what's the old saying? Uh, when you have to use C Go, now you have two problems, right? Um, so... Like if you are going to use like Wasm time or something like that from Go, you you you're now in the C Go uh, side of things probably, um, where you know it's it's for Go developers you're you're really going to want to just use a Go build chain or I mean, uh, Tiny Go hopefully uh, in the future more of just the Go build chain, 
And then uh, you, you don't have to bring in C Go with Wazir, it's just native Go. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier to build those applications in Go. Uh, and honestly, to hear from their project and to understand where, what their goals are as well as what their value proposition is to the, the wider community, I think would be uh, advantageous to everyone around us. Whoops, I was mute. Um, so yeah, just to add what, what you said, totally agree with you, David, because uh, I think one of the key points, at least for me, of having this kind of set of runtime, some why I think uh, having a runtime written in Go it makes uh, makes a lot of sense is because as today there are many more services running in Go than in Rust, at least at least from from my perception. So. One use case, which I think WebAssembly is really successful to, to bring benefits to an existing ecosystem is about extending it with a kind of a planning system, we can consider that, but just as a way of enable third-party code or a way to extend an existing application. So I think Wasiro fits really well in projects that are written in Go because you can directly import that and start using WebAssembly okay. um, and expand it. When I put the instructions together. Yeah. So when we say like the there's a lot of <laughs> again, sorry. Uh, when we say that there's a lot of people Actually, involved with Go and in the community, and yeah, they will be extending. Like, like we hope like, that if we bring was zero support, then they would extend was zero. Um, then for that extended version of was zero, they would have to write another shame. It wouldn't work directly with the was zero shame. So then that would mean creating a new set of, uh, I guess, it, I, I don't know how much sense it makes from the point of view of Ranwasi. Maybe if Ranwasi was using the Wasm shame, uh, the container the shame in Go and it was a Go project, it would, it would make a lot of sense. Um, given that it's written in Rust and like the C Go problem and all of that. Um, it's definitely possible, but I think many of the advantages that we see on the fact that it's uh, in Go and, and people will extend on it and, and uh, evolve uh, was zero into more things, uh, we are not going to be, be able to benefit that easily from, the, from that, uh, at least in the way that I'm imagining. Maybe you have some other uh, approach that doesn't involve C Go and all of that, uh, or maybe I'm misunderstanding the, the goal. Uh, definitely not suggesting that it should be a a shim uh, necessarily. Uh, just more uh, for somebody like uh, I'm here saying uh, to embed uh, WebAssembly to as plugins or the embedded case as opposed to uh, just just running. I, and I, I suppose you could, but like you said, I, I don't see much advantage to the shim uh, runtime with Wazero. Uh, for many of the same reasons that you're stating, um, more for the embedded case. Okay, that, that um, makes sense then. Uh, what do folks think about uh, having a uh, component model uh, discussion? Like, hey, here's here's components. Here's how components work. Um, uh, any? Do you think that would be of interest to the CNCF community? Yes, very much so. Um, I actually have a lot of material I could bring for that already, um, <laughs> since Bailey's my coworker and we kind of came up with a lot of the diagrams that were being used. Um, but like, I would, uh, I, I mean, I can bring something in and show it. I can also show like a practical, we've, we've had to do, those of us who've been in the community for a while have heard, like, especially Luke talk about the idea of virtual platform layering and like this, I, he started calling this idea the SDKs for free. And like, we've had to do that to like have Wasm Cloud be something that works too. And I can show like a practical application that's just purely technical. It, it literally just has to do with the fact like, hey, Wasm Cloud's an application runtime. How do you get it to run into that without having to like have libraries that are specific to um, to Wasm Cloud in your code? Like that was the, that was the whole idea of it. And so um, the, like, I think I can, I could help out with that 
um, bring in some diagrams, bring in some fun stuff and kind of show it because I think it's critical for people to understand like the high level and then we can dive into the, the low level stuff. I really enjoyed your uh, talk about that. Uh, I can't recall. Ex I, I want to say it was a uh, Wednesday could come maybe. Uh, the, the, which I've given to a couple. <laughs> I don't know about was, which uh, one. It was the virtualization. Uh, Ivan uh, asked you the question about, you know, oh, yeah. you replace that thing underneath it and you change the version. How do you know you're not introducing a uh, new bug into somebody's application? But it, it, more the idea of platform virtualization. And I, I to me, really this speaks to um, what is that next version of platform engineering? You know, um, building your stack for an application. Um, and you know, you write this code in the middle, like you said, it has no dependencies necessarily on uh, Wasm Cloud itself, uh, and you can take it and move it, and you know, maybe the underpinnings of that service uh, change based on where it's at uh, to be more appropriate to where it's running. Um, and I think the way that we look at building applications, the way that we design our applications uh, changes at that point, um, perhaps, hopefully, for the better, uh, to make them more flexible. Yeah, so I, I can bring that in whenever. I pretty much have that stuff all ready to go. I just have to dig out the slides to show the examples, but I can actually like walk through both the com the easy stuff, the the kind of top level thing that most people need to understand, and then the the complex stuff underneath the hood to show like why it matters. Also, the cat is killing me. I just this little cat yeah. in the corner keep him very happy. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I, I think like, I'm just curious, like, so we, we definitely talked about <clears throat> two weeks from now on Hell and I both talking about different projects. Um, when would we want to do a component one? <laughs> um, I don't want to be too onerous of your time. Um, so perhaps uh, we do... Uh, two weeks from now, we do the conversation about uh, Wise and Cloud, and then we also talk about uh, uh, WSS or WWS, right? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Make sure um, I had and follow... three-letter three-letter <laughs> acronym in my head. Um... Uh, and then follow up, perhaps with. Uh, run WASI and talk about container D shims and uh, kind of the work that went into, uh, you know, run WASI and, uh, and then perhaps uh, what do we think about following up? That's three meetings now, um, WAS zero perhaps. So we had WASM edge in, uh, Michael uh, talked about WASM edge. Um, or should we prioritize, uh, say, Whammer? Uh, uh, Whammer would be good to have in there. I just think because no one's heard about it at all yet in this group. Um, Whammer and Wazen 3 would just be good to like have the people, if we can get a hold of the maintainers um, and talk to them. Um, that would be that'd be really good. Um, I think we have some connections there. I can, I can actually take an action item there to see if we can talk to the Whammer people, unless you want to talk to them. David, because I think you have this, the connection, same connections we do. I'm happy to reach out. We're okay. we've been working closely with them. I'm just capturing all these in notes. Yeah, I know that Ralph was very, very keen on uh, having a shame for Wammer as well. Indeed. So I think that puts us about six weeks out, and that's pretty darn close to KubeCon time. Yeah, I think it's actually after. Yep. Yeah, when um, did we want to do? component stuff before we hit to KubeCon before we hit KubeCon so that way like it's my, my thinking around that is that then people can come I'm hoping that we can like increase that knowledge discovery by that point and then I like we can actually talk about it with people when we get to KubeCon like I, I would love for it for it to be like people are coming to 
all of our different booths and being like, what's, what's the component model? Like, why does it matter? Like, I heard you guys talk about this. Like, that's what I would, I would love to see. So if we can swing it before then, like I said, that is not a huge burden on my time because I literally have everything already there. I can just pull up the old things and talk about it. Um, and we can do like with the group here, just the questions and our experiences with the component model and what we're all doing in our projects and all those kind of things. Like as we, um, I consider it more of like a, hey, this is a group knowledge sharing session and I'll just kick it off with the the stupid ELI5 diagram I had put together for uh, for uh, WasmCon. Like that's like, that was what I was thinking could, could be done so that way people have it before we get to any of these big conferences. I think that sounds awesome. Uh, perhaps uh, maybe double that one up uh, on the Ren Wazzy day. Yeah, is that- so That'll be- um, look at the day. That'll be a month out. So that'll be the 31st. Halloween. Um, so um, we can all come dressed up. I can come dressed up as a component for Halloween. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, let's see, uh, 31st. Yeah, and that's the week before KubeCon. So that should that should work out. So um, I have no edit permission, so it's just going to show up as a suggestion, but I'll copy it. Um, So we'll do run wazi. And then oops, that's one word, not two. So run wazi and then the um should I put names next to these so we know who's doing them? Yes, please. Uh you let me Yeah, and I think I'm just like I was looking through the the uh, run the sorry the runtime charter for this one or the the working group charter. Um, I think once we get kind of through these initial introductions, obviously December is going to be a little bit slow for people, but it might be good to maybe think about discussing how we want to do the deliverables that are listed. Um, like maybe some of the I know we have the presentations, but like are there documentation things we could do or um, like schedule, like regularly scheduled ecosystem updates or, you know, like any of those kind of things. So we can like, I I would love the, the thing that I, the thing that I've seen with successful SIGs and working groups in the past in the CNCF is they're like, if they become the source of information and they become a regular source, like the, where it's common, that's when it becomes a, a useful, a useful resource for people. So I think if we kind of position ourselves as like the messaging of like, here's what's going on in CNCF, and wasm space <clears throat> with some sort of like common update like that could be uh really useful but yeah i think that's just future but just like looking through making sure i, I understood what's going on it might be a good idea no but i think it's cool that we can collect information that we can share like at the beginning maybe I spend 10 minutes talking just about two three minutes about news something that has been released standardizations things like that i think it's interesting also i think one thing that we should also cover um that I miss, that is that there are other groups that are focusing on very specific topics. For example, we have after this meeting, we have the WASI Neural Network um, uh, meeting. Um, I think that's something, also something interesting that we can share with people in case anyone wants to join any specific interesting group or things like that. I think that's something that you may miss 
if you don't see some things happen in Twitter or something happen in Zulip chat. So it's good that we also share this in case someone wants to join those groups too. Yeah, I love the idea of starting like five or 10 minutes every week just so the like that news. That's that's really nice. I'll add that in the action items to maybe do that if we consider. I'll, I'll stay out of here. And also, I like the idea about having two talks that usually takes 15 minutes because that gives time for further conversations on this. If we like spend too much time, then people don't have enough time for just asking like questions and then we need to drop. That brings up a great question. What is new in the world of WASM? I mean, there was the thing shared in the working group, right? Where we have Carnegie Mellon starting to put out a, a WASM, which is telling you that people are starting to pay attention. So that's just an interesting development for those. Um, if all we're, uh, for those following along with the, with wit and components and stuff, resources have landed. Um, so that's a big breaking change, but a very good breaking change. So if you're involved in that, just prepare to rewrite half your wit. Also, I'm pretty sure wit, oh yeah, wit now has semicolons as the end of things. So while we're in the subject of breaking news, um, that will literally breaking, um, the, uh, when you do resources, you'll probably have to update your wit so you have semicolons at some point here too. So they're getting in all the breaking changes right now um, over in that side of side of things. Um, trying to think of any other important things I've been seeing as I've been, it's hard to keep track of everything, honestly. Um, um, yeah, I think something cool that I saw, like this is not from like last week but more but i've been like looking at that um waiting for it is that currently there is a huge uh ecosystem about artificial intelligence in python so basically anything that you do is tutorial papers most of those are, are reading python which is good it, you have already all the tools that you need for for doing that but there are already many different projects that appear during this year like yama cpp that allows you to have um, uh, mature learning engines or runtimes that are not written in Python. So they can be easily compiled into WebAssembly. And I think there was an edge thing explore a lot on that side. Um, and they did pretty cool demos about running, inferencing a Llama model using uh, in WebAssembly. It, it's running the host side using the WASN um, proposal. But I think that's, that's cool that we have now more and more tools that are not written in Python and we can start compiling it to WebAssembly because it's it's a huge thing. It's not only about the only the runtime, but you also need tokenizers. You need a lot of tooling around to, to make uh, that, that work. So that's the trend that I've been following like lately. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I oh, felt uh, Spina is important for that. And through, uh, there's a Rust crate for that. Yeah. Uh, was a match is also having support for a plugin. Um, yeah, it, it's really amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, it takes forever <laughs> to, to execute, at least on my local machine. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're running the inference on your, your local machines. <laughs> I need to grant you write access, Taylor. Yeah. 
get that sorted out. Sometime. Yeah, it's it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> I just have to come through and accept. I'm just typing things. Um, trying to take notes. Um, uh, one of the things that popped up on my mind, uh, or popped up in my feed of things, that I thought was really interesting is uh, so. Uh, recently, uh, RunWazzy uh, started supporting native container workloads and uh, WebAssembly workloads running within the same pod. So that enabled a lot of uh, fun stuff like uh, sidecar workloads, that kind of stuff. Um, and posted the link in, in chat and thank you for adding it as well. Uh, or I'll add, I'm afraid to overwrite yours, but no, you're good. Go ahead and write. I was starting to type it and then. Awesome. You're good. Uh, uh, so running Dapper uh, alongside of a uh, you know, spin application uh, using uh, the container D shims. So you actually have Dapper running as a sidecar uh, within that same pod workload. Uh, so you get the native container execution right next to your WebAssembly pod or your WebAssembly uh, container. Um, and able to chat between them and uh, run a workload the same way you would have with a native container workload previously. I think Ralph likes to talk about that as pod agnost agnosticity. I think he just likes to throw words together sometimes. Well, he is I won't try to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. Um, <clears throat> sorry, was there something else I thought of? And I, oh yeah, we should also just call out to people that that Wasm Day is coming. Cloud Native Wasm Day is coming. So, if you want to sign up for those, I'm really glad the CNCF changed it to be just one ticket for everything rather than individual tickets for each event. So um, if anyone watches this after the after the fact, and I think all of us should make sure we're telling people about it because uh, it keeps getting better. I'm, I'm really glad that we're starting to see like at WasmCon and Wasm Day, like browser, server side, like all the different kinds of like use cases of WebAssembly all at the same conference is, is really nice because we kind of all have to work together on that. So um, yeah, if anyone sees this after Cloud Native Wasm Day is coming for North America. In Chicago, probably going to be freezing our butts off, to be honest, because it'll be November. Um, That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> they call it the Windy City. I have never been there, but I have heard it can be pretty cold and windy during the winter. Uh, it might be a little bit of short notice, but in, in Los Angeles at the moment is taking place DockerCon, and there's a few WebAssembly-related mm. talks. Uh, George is going to be showing the, the shims that we built with Ron it's, so it's, um, it's quite... That's really cool. It, uh, is this something that um, we can see online, Jorge? Or they will be recorded? Um, I think some of them, uh, some, some of the talks are being broadcasted online, but uh, I think that you need to buy a, a, uh, okay, a okay. ticket or something like that. I'm, oh, oh, wait, there's a watch now button there. Oh, you need to sign in. Okay. <laughs> Let me paste that link here if you're interested. Yeah, there's going to be Matt Butcher from Spin, from Fermion, uh, presenting with Spin. Uh, George is going to be talking uh, about the, the different shims that ship with Docker Desktop. Um, there's someone from I, I, he sent an email, uh, um, talking about the integration of uh, Nginx with WebAssembly. Yeah, I don't know if you, you yeah. were uh, aware of that. It's for classification and the logic he's using if you add an the transistor the tariff changes or doesn't change. What do we think about uh, adding to October 31st, um, maybe a rundown of talks at Cloud Native WASM Day and KubeCon that may be interesting to folks in the WebAssembly space? 
Um, <clears throat> uh, for KubeCon or for Wasmday? Um, well, Wasmday, they're all going to be interested. That's what I felt. That's why I was just double checking. <laughs> okay, yeah. I would, I would love to have like the rundown of like, hey, if you're interested in WebAssembly, like for KubeCon, like that's actually let's look at it. I'm just going to go write that on the agenda right now. Be the thirty first. Um. You can assign it to me. I'll just go through uh, the uh, talks and just kind of pick them out and add them into uh, the doc. Okay. I added it up there. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else we're interested in covering today? I, I, I really love the the agenda. Is now I, I think that's so helpful for folks to be able to, you know, see here's some upcoming uh, content. Uh, encourage folks to come join in. It's always good. It would be yeah. great if we fill them up before okay, then, a few hours before the meeting. Yeah. I think there's plenty we can come up with. Like I said, like there's discussion things like <clears throat> that we can do to fulfill the deliverables part of the charter. That I think we'll be able to easily fill that stuff up there. Like we can, um, I think we're a little bit far away from things like standards, tests, and certifications, for example, but we are um, close to being able to say like WebAssembly ecosystem proposals. So I think it'd be good as we start to see proposals come in for like, things that are going into component model and all that, even though it's in the bytecode alliance to be able to have like the official thing we've decided as a working group is the position like, hey, we'd really like to have X. We've talked about it as, as interested parties here in the CNCF. Here's what we'd like and why we'd like it. And then we can we can propose that opinion. We can show, so one of us can go comment on one of the issues linked to the discussion notes and say like, here's the discussion we had. Like that's, that's a very good cross community collaboration thing. Um, and then, we like there's this idea of like publications presentations and white papers it'd be really nice to like one i brainstormed that we could we could work on as a group is like what are the different types of what what are the emerging use like we've we've had predictions that what the use cases are for web assembly what are the actual emerging use cases right now inside of the cncf environment or like those kind of things those like those can range from like an initial like what we've observed to a we're going to run an actual like survey and have the cncf send out a survey and then um like that we've created or something like that there's there's a couple different things um yeah um, just a couple different things about that um, David, do you think it would make sense to discuss again? I don't remember if it, it was in this working group or just in the Ranwasi uh, meetings, but uh, discussing the OCI work that James is doing. Um, I, and I, you're also involved on that, right? Um, how WebAssembly uh, artifacts will be distributed in, in OCI? Um, I think that deserves a white paper of, hey, here's how all the pieces fit together, all the way from like, uh, here's a registry, maybe even WARG, uh, and the pathway from WARG to a registry to then consumption within Kubernetes and all the pieces that actually come together to, to form that, um, including specifications around uh, what a what the artifacts should be shaped like, what the media types are, um, so that we can you know, really start to uh, at least a uh, uh, gain consensus on it. Thank you. Um, that the media types are actually the media types that we want, that we're okay with. Um, but B, also to uh, help people to uh, coalesce on that and, and you know write tools that are all common. Uh, Taylor? Yeah, I just want to call out that's actually something we should probably start commenting on sooner rather than later as a working group is um, work and how we want it to interop with things like OCI, um, because OCI definitely doesn't cover the the spec. Um, the OCI doesn't cover what we need to have to like search for components and stuff like that. And so like but there's also talks of WARG just being able to store things in OCI and existing registry stuff. So we have to make sure that we've talked about that, said like what the requirements would be and why, 
Um, <clears throat> because especially with OCI registries, there's technological reasons and lots of business reasons. People spend a lot of time getting their blessed registries together and they run it on all the different clouds that they that they might have it on, that they might be running stuff on. And so there's, there's business reasons and we need to make sure those are captured in the design documents for people who are using these things for real. So it might be really good for us to maybe have that discussion sooner rather than later as they begin to roll out those types of technologies inside Bytecode Alliance. Um, any particular angle that you see with Ward? Uh, I, I'm curious of your perspective. Um, we're, we're working with a lot of the people who are involved with WARG. I mean, I helped start the SIG registry thing over there. I've kind of stopped participating as of late, but, um, <clears throat> the, what it comes down to is, like I said, I am very much of the opinion, OCI does not cut it for searching for, you, you need something. And I don't care if that wraps OCI. I, I think there's, there's other things to be gained from stuff that's, that's outside of OCI, I care less about the cryptographic chain of trust stuff from WARG, especially in the way it's implemented, which is very complex in my in my opinion. Um, you have to keep, like, if you add that in, you have to keep it somewhat uh, accessible for users if you're, if you're going to require those kind of things. But the main idea of having something where I, I need to be able to say, hey, I need a component that satisfies this contract. Please give it to me. So that way, when you have something like WASI key value, you can say, oh, I'm running this in Azure. Let me go fetch the one that's implemented for Cosmos or something like that. Or if you're running in in um, in Amazon, it might fetch something from for Dynamo or, you know, like those are the kinds of things where we need to have the ability to say, like, I need something that satisfies this requirement, these requirements, and please give it to me. And so we definitely need something because OCI doesn't cut that. And I don't think that's something we can, that it, I mean, even if people were willing to add it to the OCI spec, I don't think that it belongs there. And so we should have an opinion on like how it can play nice with it. And then maybe like people who have designed registries before and designed these kind of storage things can give their input into like what should be there, what shouldn't be there, that kind of stuff. Uh, when you say uh, you, need, you need to search based on certain requirements, would that be like a, a weight interface? You need something that implements a certain uh, weight interface. Yeah. Or is so, there more to it? Um, there, There's a little bit more as well, um, because you also want to be able to search within, com because components, right, are just, you can have a component that's made up of multiple components. And being able to go back and look and see like, what components are in my component and that kind of stuff isn't like in the future you'll even be able to like explode view this and then like reassemble things that you need there's a whole bunch of of advanced features that get enabled by this um and it also like those kind of features in my personal opinion now this is coming from the fact that i i helped create bindle um which is technically still, I think, under David's purview over there and under Deus Lab stuff. But um, the like the reason why Bindle was in, like initially used as like a discussion point for this was the fact that you could say, okay, I have an arbitrary list of features and and um, metadata that I want to sort and filter on and get what I need for my platform. So that way, you can have a situation where. Even think about this, like even if we take WebAssembly out of this, you'll see immediately how WebAssembly applies. But like, let's just say I can run on a mobile device. I can run on a laptop or I could be running on a beefy like machine in the cloud. And depending on where I run it, I might have a different Im implementation of like my smart search. Like I might have a locally like static, easy to use model that does the, my predictions for my rest favorite restaurants or something on my phone, but it's just a limited library. And then on my laptop, it's a little bit more beefy because it has a GPU that it can access, but it doesn't want to like slow everything down. So it kind of optimizes between the two. And then in the server, you get the full, like I'm going to do like full machine learning model, like inference of what's going on here, what restaurant this person could like. And each of those components, they, they essentially have the same interface, the same API, but you use them very differently. And the run times that do this have to have the ability to make that decision. And so you have to have both the metadata and the ability to sort through it. And given the fact that like OCI, OCI doesn't even have a search 
function. And that's like an extra thing that people add on top of it, uh, which once again, I think that's a smart technical decision. Keep it like good separations of concerns. I, I, I get that. But we're that's why we need something that allows us to do that with WebAssembly. I think we need that for more than WebAssembly personally. But at the very minimum, we need that for like WebAssembly to be able to say like, here's the component I need for this situation. Here's the component I need for this situation. So for secure environment, I need secure component A. For other environment, I can use the default Redis like implementation of key value or whatever it might be. So sorry, I'm not very familiar with Word, but would this uh, contemplate like uh, I need, like when you say I need uh, a database, would that mean that you get native code? It's not just a WebAssembly component. It's not something that runs on every architecture. It's something that uh, I need a, something that implements the weight for a database, a SQL database, and it runs on an ARM64, for instance. Or, or am I getting that wrong? Are, are you familiar? Just, oh, sorry. Go ahead, David. It, it's just components. So uh, the payload for Warg at this point is actually a single component uh, you know, file, a single WASM component. Um, and that ends up getting persisted to some backend store. Uh, and then the metadata, uh, you could think of Warg as like NPM. Um, so NPM, um, for, uh, yeah. Yeah, but for instance, if I need something that, uh, a, a database, mm -hmm. prob probably that's going to require native code. It's not going to be full WebAssembly implementation. For the database itself, yes, if that's if that's what you mean. But for the client for the database, that will likely be WebAssembly. Okay. And and the and the and the <clears throat> the, the server for the database that would be provided by the runtime or um yeah, it'd be provided by the runtime. It can be provided by any number of things, actually. So um that's the that's the beauty of the component model. This this virtual platform layering is on one system, it could just be doing like an in value, like hash map that's that's your key value store. And on another system, like I said, it could be running and connecting to Cosmos. And on another system, it could be connecting to Redis. And so all that matters, have, have you seen what a, a WIT world looks like before, Jorge? Uh, yes. Yeah, so like that's like here's here's one. Let me just oh, wait. I can't share screen because I probably don't have permissions. Um, but the uh, like one of the things we do like so for to run in Wasm Cloud, there are there's a specific export we expect, and there's some some imports that we pr provide from the host. And so when a component is all joined together to run into Wasm Cloud, it says. Hey, I need to import the was like we have something an interface called Wasm Cloud Bus Lattice and one called Wasm Cloud Bus Host, and so in that case, that's provided by um, provided by our Wasm Cloud host. But in other instances, <clears throat> this is not how it would actually work. But let's say I had a component like that, and I gave it to David, and David wants to run it. David could shim out the those things that are wasm cloud specific and have them do what they need to do to connect to azure now what would actually happen is we have a component that is entirely wasm cloud list and that's what he'd actually take but the the thing is is like then i can take different components and virtualize out stuff that i don't care about or um like think about a file system if i have on like my machine, I'm just going to use my file system. But once I run in a server environment, I might have very specific security and encryption controls. And so when it calls file write or file read, it might be doing a decryption step for you. And those kind of like things get folded in um, into like what they need. And so that world is basically what tells any runtime, this is what I need to run. Can you give me that? And the runtime can say, yes, I can or no, I can't. And um, that's what Warg is designed to do is to say like, hey, I need something for this. Can you give me something that satisfies this with these requirements? And then it pulls it in. Does that make any more sense? Um, yeah, so I guess like Wasm Cloud would have its own registry with components that uh, fit to the infrastructure that Wasm Cloud provide. And it can shell out to some generic components out in, in a more generic registry, right? Like a bytecode alliance registry. Yeah, and we'll we'll all use components. It's meant to be federated as well. So this the metadata from work is meant to be federated specifically for the reason you're talking about. Where you know what? Like 
Microsoft could write a component for Cosmos. I'm not going to go rewrite how to connect to Cosmos. I'm just going to go pull the thing in from, from Microsoft's registry. But then also, like you said, I'll have my Wasm Cloud specific bits that get glued on, and that'll be in a registry that we host. Or like, like it'll just depend on on how the ecosystem evolves. But yes, very much that federation step is, is kind of an important thing to be able to do. Um, that you can kind of do, but not really with with um, container registries as it stands right now. Thank you. Okay, so I think that really calls uh, attention that we do need to talk about components. We need to educate uh, the community about that and also talk about uh, registries and all the good stuff that goes along with uh, storing our components and you know, searching our metadata for them. Um, we are reaching the end of our time and I wanna be, uh, you know, I'm grateful for everybody uh, coming. Taylor, particularly, uh, thank you for uh, your your contributions here, and uh, look forward to working with you more on this. Thanks for the good meeting, and yeah, I added the registries discussion as a possible topic to November fourteenth, so we can do that as a as a thing. Um, if we need to, I can pull some people in from the SIG registries group, um, and and kind of pull them in and ask like them to kind of give an overview. Um, of, of everything that they're working on and work. And that can give us some fuel to discuss what we want to recommend from our side. Fantastic. I, I appreciate it. Uh, awesome. So everyone have a super fantastic day. It is really good Thank to talk with you all. Thank you, Taylor. See you in two weeks. Good to see you. Yep. See y'all. Cheers.